Hi, I'm Urvashi Pitsre from TwoSleevers.com and I'm going to talk to you today about different varieties of rice and how best to cook them in the pressure cooker. So, um, the three topics I'm going to cover today are different types of rice and how they're used. I'm going to cover the most commonly um, used rices, why you should pressure cook rice, and then timings associated with pressure cooking rice. Okay, so in terms of the times of, uh, types of rice, before I get into it, I do want to point out that I have a uh, an Indian Instant Pot Cooking uh, cookbook available on Amazon and it's got 56 recipes very very simple very authentic Indian recipe so I do hope you'll check it out and in that book are some of the most likely suspects like there's basmati pilau there's lamb dum biryani there's chicken biryani but there's also other dishes that you might not encounter unless you were <laughs> either Indian or in somebody's house who was Indian like you wouldn't get them in a restaurant so masale bhat which is a very Maharashtrian uh, preparation the state that Bombay is from is, is, is in that cookbook um, khichdi which is a sort of what I would call the Indian version of uh, tomato soup and cheese a grilled cheese is in there so we eat that when we're sick there's a bunch of other dishes and I hope you'll check it out uh, but this video is not about that this video is about talking about the different types of rice and how you use them so um, in terms of sort of how um, you would use these different types of rices, there's, there's a couple of things that make rice grains different. So from a lay person's point of view, what you see is you see differences in color, you see differences in aroma, and you see differences in length, long, long grain, medium grain, short grain. Underneath the surface, if you look to see what's going on, uh, you find that the differences are in the aroma they carry through this very complicated acetylpyroline uh, molecule, but that's really just an aroma molecule. And then rice has two types of starch and different varieties have a different concentration. So on the one hand, you have amylopectin, which is what makes rice really, really sticky. So when you make sushi rice, glutinous rice, uh, or even jasmine rice, it has more amylopectin versus if you make a long grain basmati that has more amylose. Amylose is this long chain starch. It doesn't bind together, it doesn't stick together, it doesn't gelatinize and that makes it different. What that means is that you cannot just substitute um, jasmine rice where basmati is called for and the other way around in a good recipe. So a good recipe writer is going to tell you which type of rice grain is most appropriate for a particular one. Okay, so I'm going to walk you through uh, some of the uh, sort of the top level characteristics. So basmati is one of those grains that is distinctively uh, different in terms of aroma. Some people say it smells like popcorn popping. But the thing about basmati that you have to remember is that as it cooks, it doesn't get fat. It gets long and thin, which I wish I would do, but if I eat, I get fat. I don't get long and thin. Basmati is lucky. It gets long and thin. And when you cook with basmati, like when you make basmati uh, pulao or when you make dum biryani, so when you make some Middle Eastern preparations, the hallmark of a good dish like that is that the rice grains don't clump together. So when you're looking for grains that fall apart, separate each from the other, you really want basmati. Jasmine rice is fragrant in a very different way. Some people say it has a floral fragrance. It's sticky. So when you're eating with chopsticks, for example, it's really, really good. Uh, the other thing that I find jasmine rice exceptional for is when you're um, eating it with like a Thai style curry with a coconut curry, that coconut milk curry with the jasmine rice is just divine. So it's really, really good for those preparations. And then brown rice is kind of, it's nuttier, it's chewier, it's all purpose. Um, people believe it's healthier. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Um, um, you know, there's not that much more fiber in it. Um, there tends to be a little more contaminants in brown rice sometimes, unless you are very careful about, you know, organically grown, etc. Um, and really, in this day and age, most of the rice in the United States is sprayed with um, different kinds of sort of uh, vitamins and minerals. So white rice tends to be also fairly healthy, but some people just like brown rice. It tastes good. Um, and it, actually, in a pressure cooker, it tastes exceptionally good, to be honest. Um, so if you like brown, brown rice, you know, why not? There, there's nothing wrong. Uh, there's nothing to prevent you from eating that and I can show you how to cook that easily. Black rice was known as forbidden rice. It was available to only a very few uh, of the royalty. A black rice has this coating and that coating has a chemical in it which is the same as what makes eggplant get its color. So that coloring that comes from it, that natural coloring that black rice has is as a result of that chemical. It has a little husk on it. Uh, so does brown rice by the way, so does red wehani rice. Those rices have a husk on them. Sushi rice is, uh, as you guys know, very sticky and very starchy. Now this rice, remember when I told you basmati has high amylose, low amylopectin? This one is the other way around. So it has more starch that your body's gonna absorb. Uh, and so in terms of raising your, your blood sugar uh, and your insulin levels, the stickier the rice, uh, the more likely it is to raise it. So something like a basmati or a separate uh, long grain rice, will it will raise your blood sugar, obviously, it's still a starch, but less so than a, than a stickier rice, as an example. 
And glutinous rice, uh, despite its name, has no gluten in it. Uh, it's glutinous in this context simply means sticky. So when you're making like a Thai uh, coconut rice with that mango, you know that little uh, Thai pudding that they make, um, you would use that. You would use it if you were making a coconut pandan rice. So I'm going to post this on the twosleevers.com blog. I'm going to post all of these recipes. Um, this rice has very, very high amylopectin and almost no amylase. So it's very, very sticky. The grains tend to clump together and uh, it's very, very different from a basmati. So to recap, between basmati, jasmine, brown rice, red rice, black rice, uh, arborio rice, glutinous rice, sushi rice, those rices have not only a very different level of starch, they have a different type of starch in them. So you have to be very cognizant of the finished dish, you have to think about the finished dish and based on that determine the type of rice that you need. So just a quick little chart, um, long grain go grows to about four times its length when it's cooked, medium grain grows to about twice its length, and uh, short grain is kind of like me, it just gets fat, okay? And it, it gets kind of uh, gloppy and uh, sort of, it sticks together, which is a very, very creamy mouthfeel, which is a really good thing. And then on the right-hand side, I've shown you sort of what it can be used for. If you would like to download this, by the way, I'm gonna make this available on twosleevers.com. Go onto the website, there's a little um, menu bar item that says downloads, click on the downloads, and you'll be able to download this this presentation for free as you will the cooking with spices video uh, and the, the uh, slides that I made to go with that okay Okay, so why bother pressure cooking rice? All of us have been cooking rice for a really long time. Many of us have a stovetop method we love, or we have a rice cooker that we love. Well, there's actually a really good reason for why rice tastes very different when made in the pressure cooker, and it, and it really does. Um, I'm a huge rice fan, uh, even though I try to low carb. Uh, if I'm gonna eat one thing, it's gonna be rice on a treat day. So the thing about a pressure cooker is that the heat and the moist environment that it produces gelatinizes the starch in it, and you get a much, much creamier mouthfeel uh, with rice rice that has been pressure cooked. Now in case of basmati, you don't really want a creamy feel. What you want is for the kernel to be cooked right through. And pressure cooking does that. Uh, you can make really, really good pressure cooked basmati rice in there. People say it makes nutrients more bioavailable when you pressure cook. To be honest, I haven't seen evidence in favor or against this, and since it's not against it, then we, we can just assume that at least it doesn't hurt the bionutrients. Now, I think here's the, here's the thing that you have to remember about a pressure cooker. So what you don't wanna do is you don't wanna take a stovetop recipe and just assume you're gonna cook it exactly the same way in a pressure cooker. A pressure cooker does things to uh, foods that changes the way that the chemistry of that food reacts when it's cooked. Okay, so one of the things, for example, is there's less water being evaporated. And this is a very important point as I show you the time that you're going to cook rice for. Because less water is evaporating from there, a couple of things happen. One is you need less water when cooking in a pressure cooker. Uh, and two is actually that the aroma molecules, remember that first, mo the three A's that I showed you for rice? The first one, which is the aroma molecule, has nowhere to go. It's trapped inside that pressure cooker, and so rice retains the aroma a little bit better. Uh, and the other thing is, you know, of course, there's no babysitting required, right? Uh, you don't have to sit around and, and, and watch it. And I think because, um, because it's cooking so fast, you actually do not need to pre-soak the rice. So the reason pre -soak, people pre-soak the rice is to speed up the cooking process because during the cooking process for rice, aroma molecules start to dissipate really quickly. Well, in a pressure cooker, they're contained. They're not going anywhere. So the, the aroma is maintained in there. And by the way, you're cooking some of those rices so quickly, four minutes, five minutes, that you're not going to lose that much uh, of the aroma. So there is no need to pressure uh, to pre-soak when you're making um, rice in the pressure cooker. Okay? So... Um, We've talked about why we should do it. Now here's the part that I think most people are gonna be extremely surprised by. So for all rice, except arborio and black rice that I will talk to you about in a minute, the proportion that you want in a pressure cooker is one cup water, one cup rice. Now I know this is not what we've been told, but trust me, I made six batches of rice before um, doing this as a Facebook Live video as well as before posting it here. I tried um, a r black rice, um, brown rice, uh, jasmine, basmati, glutinous rice. I tried all of those and for uh, and arborio, and for, except for black rice and arborio, the proportions of one cup water and one cup rice work. Now you're gonna ask me why is it so different, right? When we make a brown rice on the stovetop, it takes a lot longer. So here's what my reading uh, led me to understand. And by the way, there's a really good Cook's Illustrated video that you might wanna check out on this topic. But here's what happens. When rice is cooking, it's not that it needs more water to cook brown rice than it does white rice. They both need the same amount of water. What brown rice needs is more time. The water needs to penetrate the husk before it can get to the starch in the rice and start to cook that rice. When you're doing the stovetop, what's gonna happen is the water is gonna evaporate. 
So essentially what you're doing is you're adding in more water to compensate for the evaporation. Now, luckily for you in a pressure cooker, there is no evaporation, right? So you don't have to increase the amount of water you put in. You do, however, have to increase the time. So I'm going to show you how that works in a minute. Um, but when it comes to brown rice, jasmine, basmati, red, sticky rice, uh, one cup water, one cup rice is, is what you need. Now, the different types of rice do need different uh, cook types. Remember what I said about water needing to penetrate through the husk, and that takes a little bit longer? So think about the rices that have a husk. Uh, brown, uh, brown rice has a husk, red rice has a husk, um, and black rice has this husk on it. Okay, Wild rice is not really a rice, it's a seed, so I'm going to leave that aside for half a minute. Uh, but when this water needs to penetrate, the way it's going to do that is you have to allow it more time uh, to cook. Now, the other thing I will mention is when I tested these different rices, I rinsed all of them. You rinse the rice, you drain off all the water that you can. There's going to be some left. We're not going to worry about it. So the important thing to remember is you do not need to pre-soak. You do need to rinse your rice. You want one cup water, one cup rice, unless it's arborio. And the most important thing is you do need to let it NPR. So all of these rices call for a 10 minute NPR, natural pressure release. Don't open the vent and let all the air, uh, sorry, the pressure off. And the reason for that is that 10 minutes of steam time is actually essential cook time. So if you um, are in a hurry, your rice is probably going to have a really hard kernel on the inside and it may not have absorbed all the water, so it'll be a little bit mushy. You're not going to get good rice. So be patient and let it steam. Okay, so basically for all rice except arborio and black, the things to remember in a pressure cooker, one cup water, one cup rice, rinse and drain before you cook, no need to pre-soak, and you want a 10 minute NPR. Okay, so this little handy dandy chart tells you about uh, basmati jasmine glutinous. Uh, for those rices, you want one cup rice, one cup water, and you want about four or five minutes of cook time and 10 minutes of NPR. Brown, red, and mixed rice, you're still gonna do one cup rice and one cup water, but this time you're gonna give it 22 minutes. Okay, so this is the, I tried 15 minutes, I tried 20 minutes, 22 minutes worked really well for me. And uh, if you do 22 minutes of cook time on high pressure, so press your manual, your pressure cook button, hit 22 minutes, and then once it's done cooking, let it sit there for 10 minutes. Now, arborio and black rice. You know, arborio is the one that you would use most often for risotto, okay? And why do you stir that? The reason you're stirring when you're making an arborio is you're trying to break the rice. You're trying to break the rice, you want it to leach all of its starch into the cooking liquid and get this creamy pudding-like feel into the rice. And the same is true of black rice. So when I tried arborio and black at one minute, uh, sorry, one cup of rice and one cup water, it actually didn't work so well. So I increased the water to one and a half, but I will tell you, once you're done cooking that, right, you give it a 10 minute NPR, here's what I would suggest to you. Open it up, stir it vigorously, and then pour in some additional broth or water or coconut milk or whatever you're using, and stir until it becomes creamy and that rice starts to leach its starch and absorb some of that liquid, okay? So for arborio and for black rice, what I did was I used one cup rice, cup and a half of water, and then I added more liquid. In case of arborio, I added stock. In case of the black rice, I was making um, like a Thai uh, pudding, and so then I added coconut milk and sugar and stirred the heck out of it at that point, and I got a really, really creamy uh, mouthfeel for it, okay? So listen, I realize this is very different from the way that um, all of us have been cooking it, but many of us have been struggling to get good rice out of the pressure cooker, and I will tell you this methodology, these timings, um, actually will work really well for you. So here's the thing. I could give you this recipe. For me, it's perfect. I've made six batches. I'm quite happy with it. You might not be. Okay, you might taste that rice and I go, well, how did she think this was good rice? Well, here, you know, we all like our rice different, right? Some of us like, I like, I like each grain separate in basmati. Not everybody does. Uh, some people prefer the rice to be a little bit stickier, or a little bit softer, or a little bit not so cooked. So here, what I'm going to show you is some if-then logic for troubleshooting. Okay, so yes, it's my programmer background coming out. Um, but I think um, this is a good way to get started. So here's what I would suggest. The first time you make the rice, make it according to the recipe and the time that I've given you. And then if that rice is still too mushy, the first thing you should do is reduce the water. Uh, perhaps you didn't drain well enough. Perhaps you just like it a little bit um, softer in your mouth. Uh, so reduce the water first and then reduce the time. Okay, if it's too chewy, first increase the time. Before you add water and make it mushy, give it more time to cook. Uh, if that doesn't work for you, then go ahead and add uh, additional water. At this hard inner center, the rice hasn't cooked through, okay? And in that case, what you want to do, the first thing you want to do is add more water. Um, allow it to have a little bit more, uh, so for that to penetrate into the rice and for that starch to cook. 
Uh, and then if that isn't enough for you, increase the cook time. But if you have a hard inner kernel, for sure, make sure that you're giving it the 10 minute NPR because that steam time is very, very critical. Okay. And if the rice is sticking to the bottom, you really, um, you know, it's, it's gotten a little bit overcooked. It's probably sat there for too long. You didn't NPR in time. Uh, in that case, what I would suggest is add either ghee or coconut oil uh, into the rice. It gives it a wonderful flavor. It increases resistant starch anyway. So it's a, it's a good thing to be able to do. So when I'm doing basmati, for example, for everyday use, I use one cup of basmati, one cup of water, one tablespoon of either ghee or coconut oil, and then I use one uh, teaspoon of salt. So ghee, salt, water, rice, and that's how I typically make it every day, okay? Um, so if it's sticking to the bottom, first add that uh, little bit of a lubricant, if you will, some kind of a ghee or coconut oil into it, uh, and then decrease the cook and NPR time. So make sure you haven't left it, let it go beyond 10 minutes. Uh, and the other thing you could do is you could buy a ceramic liner. So if you have an instant pot, for example, it's like $28 or something. That ceramic liner is actually quite useful for quite a few things. Um, and you could also try pot and pot. You could, if you watch the pot and pot video, it'll show you how to do it. Pot and pot is a lot more forgiving. Um, you might want to add a minute or two to any of the cook times that I've given, but you can try rice that way, okay? And if you want additional recipes with how to do it, uh, do check out the Indian Instant Pot book that's on Amazon. Uh, look for Urvashi Pitre or um, look for Indian Instant Pot and you will find it on Amazon. And I do hope you'll try that. There's a lot of uh, different Indian recipes in it, all of which are for the Instant Pot. And it's meant for people who are both expert Indian cooks but don't have a lot of time, as well as people who've never made Indian food before. And you can find all of these recipes um, in there. And as I said earlier, um, I'm Urvashi Pitre from TwoSleevers.com. There's a lot of different ways you can follow me, including on this YouTube channel. Channel. But if you would like to download these slides, go on to twosleevers.com, go to the top uh, menu bar where it says download, and you can download these slides as well as the cooking with spices slides for free. You can download a yogurt cookbook. There's a Mexican e-cookbook if you want to purchase that for a very small price. Um, and then, you know, I'm on Pinterest, Facebook, etc. And if you're on the Instant Pot forum, uh, you'll probably see me posting on there. So this was my presentation on the different types of rice, how they get used, what makes them different, how to cook them, and the different pressure cook times. And I hope this was helpful for you. Uh, I'm Orvashipa3 from ChooseLevers.com. Thank you for watching.